Well, welcome to the Middlesex Moments Radio Show. I'm Dr. Anna Wasesha, President of Middlesex Community College. Amy Christopher, the Director of our Meriden Center over in Meriden. Good morning. Incredible. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. So in the last year, there's been a lot of change over there. So we're, we're starting with the physical plant itself, right? Exactly. We added um, an additional floor to our space. We previously had two floors in a building that we rent in downtown Meriden. We added an additional floor, and with that came um, a new learning lab, a uh, new lab, new classroom, a uh, community room where we hold events for community meetings as well as for student presentations and visitors and some new administrative space. Um, and probably the best part of that new space is our new welcome center which allows students and families to come in and see, receive um, all of the answers to the questions they have about starting college, enrolling, transferring, and getting started. Well, let's start with some of the basic facts. What's the address of the Meriden? Uh, the Meriden Center is located at 55 West Main Street in downtown Meriden. It's across from the Meriden Courthouse. And it's a one-way street, and it doesn't look like there's a lot of parking. So what do I do if I'm in a car and I want to stop? Uh, good question. We actually have quite a bit of free parking around the building. Um, you would ec uh, enter through the Grove Street entrance, and there is a parking garage behind the second lot um, on Church Street, which is also behind the center. And what are hours? What hours are you open? The Welcome Center and the administrative offices are open from nine o'clock until four o'clock, and we do also hold uh, occasional late night. Um, it's best to call to find out when you can schedule a later night appointment. And if I wanted to call? 203-238-6202. Uh, so you have a different area code. We do. the Middletown campus. Yes. All right, so 203-238-6202. Wonderful. Okay, so I hope that if anybody's out there listening to this radio program, they're interested in attending Middlesex Community College in Meriden, they'll give you a call. I hope so. Or just drop by. Yes. All right. So now let's talk a little bit about the um, the Meriden community because it's you know it's a different place than Middletown. And one of the things that I'm so impressed by is the relationship between that Meriden Center and the various institutions and organizations that are working so hard to revitalize Meriden. Meriden's got a lot going on. It does. We're in the middle of a transit-oriented development project, which is going to bring a lot of new rail lines through the center of downtown and along. Um, with those rail lines, a lot of new housing opportunities, new business opportunities. Um, it'll be great for our students who will be able to get to the Meriden campus a lot more efficiently from places north. And, and um, we're working very closely with the city on helping them develop those plans. So after we take a break, which we always have to do, let's talk about the vision for Meriden itself and then see how the college can fit into that. Record. Well, welcome back. I'm Anna Wasesha, president of Middlesex Community College. This is Middlesex Moments. Uh, and today uh, we're engaging in some promotion of our Meriden Center uh, because we uh, want to make sure that everyone in our listening audience knows that we have a college uh, site in the city of Meriden and Meriden is now a happening place. There's just a huge amount of development going on there around, you know, sort of I think stimulated by the increase in the numbers of trains that will be stopping in Meriden. Uh, I'm here today with Tammy Christopher who's the director of our Meriden Center and we want to just sort of talk about uh, ways in which the development of the city of Meriden and the development of our Meriden Center will go hand in hand. So where do you want to start on that? Well, one thing Subject. I really wanted to discuss was a lot of the community partnerships that we have with different agencies in Meriden and our local area. We're very fortunate to have a community that thrives on community partnerships. Um, the community leaders, representatives are all very interested in working together, using shared resources to help the city with whatever needs and help the residents with whatever needs that they have. So some of our strongest partnerships include our partnership with the Meriden Public School System. Right now we have a few interesting programs going on with them. One is a dual enrollment program where we enroll students high school students in college courses. Those college courses are held on site at the local high schools and the students earn both college credit and high school credit for those programs. And what kinds of courses do they? Take? Currently we're offering courses in early childhood education and our goal with this program is that those students will graduate with some type of college certificate in hand and be immediately able to go to work while they continue to pursue their higher education. And then sometimes some of the students, is it from the middle school, will come onto the campus? Yes, exactly. Um, we know through research that the more students engage in a college environment at a younger age, the more likely they are to attend college after graduation. And right now we have a seventh grade enrichment program going on on Saturdays. It's a five-week program 
and we have students from both of the Meriden Middle Schools attending, taking two courses. One is in reading comprehension and critical thinking using the New York Times, and the other is in a leadership development program. These are, how old are they? They're seventh grade so students. So how old are you in this? 12, school? 11, 12, 13. And they're reading the New York Times? Yeah, and they're doing great. They pick up on a lot of things that I think sometimes as adults we skim through. Like, and for example? One of the most popular things they're researching right now is the um, discussion that is going on with Apple and its tax evasion or you know profit that's not really being shared because it's been moved to di- different countries internationally and they really pick up on on the ins and outs of that and they're very they're very good wow yeah. they're That's creating uh, projects right now to share with their parents our final um, day of this event is, or this this program is June 1st so they have projects they've been working on with groups that they'll be sharing with their parents on that day that's wonderful mm-hmm. do some of them repeat do they have they participated in this and then they can come back not yet because the volume is not that great and we want to give a lot of different students an opportunity to experience this mm-hmm. last year we ran Uh, two or three different academies for eighth grade students so this is the first year we're bringing it to the seventh grade level and they're doing wonderfully that sounds like it yeah it's fun yeah so we started out by saying it's uh, really important for young people to experience what a college is like. Meriden Center is different from the Middletown campus in that here, we're, first of all, we're kind of separated from the city. We're up on a hill, and it's very bucolic, and there are woods everywhere, and yes. uh, lots of lawn. And you are right in the epicenter. I, I mean, that two-block strip, to me, sort of seems like downtown Meriden. It is. Yeah. It is. We're right in the middle. Right. Basically. So what do you perceive as the college experience in the Meriden Center? A lot of our students live close by. About 70% of them are from Meriden, although we are bringing in more students from the surrounding suburbs lately. They use the downtown for the convenience stores down there, the library is down there, the YMCA we have a great partnership with. This There's a student discount so students can literally walk across the street and use the YMCA before or after classes. We've combined with the Y to offer a basketball tournament and a flag football tournament, so we're very involved with them. And they also offer a child watch opportunity for some of our students that need that service, and that opportunity can be utilized during the day or the evening during the week, so it's been very helpful. You've been at a lot of community meetings about the TOD, Transit-Oriented Development. Yes. So what, what do you wish would happen downtown? There's a lot of different thoughts on what Merritt and downtown should be, but the general feel is we want to retain the character of downtown Meriden, but bring in a lot of um, business and housing opportunities to diversify our tax base a little bit, to draw more visitors to downtown as well as folks who want to live downtown. So what are the, well, it's the Silver City, right? It is so, the Silver City. So, so what are the things somebody would visit? When they go downtown? Yes. Right now we have the Augustus Curtis uh, Cultural Center, which is uh, held for events. It's a historic building. They do lectures and things there, community events. Was it a residence at one time? I'm not quite sure of the background of that. Um, there There are two historic homes in downtown Meriden. There are three public galleries in downtown Merritt and these are all very kind of hidden gems in the mm-hmm. city so hopefully through this uh, transit oriented development opportunity a lot of those will be brought out and spiffed up and shined for everyone to come and visit. And what about retail? Retail we don't have a lot right now. Um, we do have some restaurants, not destination restaurants, more of convenience restaurants and that's really it for retail. There's a few clothing shops um, a few, there's a computer repair location, there's a few things like that. But in the future, the, the, the plan is that there would be quite a lot of that. That is right? the plan. Right. So the plan is that folks who were traveling through Meriden would have an opportunity to stop and eat and shop and take a class or use the new park that's being designed, which will be across the street from the train station. Where there used um, to be a shopping mall. Yeah, there used to be a shopping mall there before the Meriden uh, Westfield Mall became in existence and then it was barren for a while there are community events held there now a circus we have an ice skating rink there in the winter time but it has some flooding issues and the new plans as part of this project will unearth a buried waterway through there and help with the flood issues and they want to resolve that before they really bring a lot more businesses downtown did you grow up in Meredith I did not you didn't no so do you do you know from just urban myth what was what preceded the mall on that plane there that is the across from the train station? It's a huge area. It is. There was a, an L-shaped 
strip mall in that area. Prior to that, I don't, yeah. I'm not aware of what was down there. I imagine that people, as, as Meriden develops now, mm -hmm. will begin to retrace its historical roots as well. Yeah, and it's a great opportunity because, as you said, it is a silver city, which is silver manufacturing in the past. And it used to be quite wealthy, quite, quite wealthy city. Our uh, parks, we have the most parkland of any municipality in the Northeast, which is another little known fact. We're a part of an organization that uh, recognizes locations in, across the country for having that designation. So at least we had the perspective of being there for a while. Yeah, I've lived in Meriden for six years, but I grew up in Southington, which is right next to Meriden. Oh. And I had relatives that lived in Meriden, so yeah. I've been in the area for quite a long time. And gone to things like the Daffodil Festival. Daffodil Festival. Right. Hubbard Park was my backyard, which is one of the biggest parks in Meriden. It was designed uh, by one of the Olmsteads, with, which if you know park history, they're very... Frederick Law Olmsted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, uh, let's let's go back, because we want to talk about the Meriden Center. Let's talk some more about um, the college experience experience that you see students having when they come to classes there? Right. It's only really improved with this renovation. We pay a lot of attention to the students that come through the doors and they tell us what they want and we try to do our best to serve their needs. Um, some of the wonderful things we have there now are um, there's a learning lab which allows students to receive tutoring, to study in small groups. It has a lending library that has books and DVDs and other media. We find now that a lot of students really take advantage of tutoring where in the past that wasn't really happening as much. We didn't have a dedicated space, but they have their own community now. It's a really great opportunity for students to get together and meet each other as well. And from that, I think, has blossomed a chess club, an interfaith prayer group, a garden club. And these are only in the last semester or two. So we're really seeing a lot more student interaction amongst each other, but also interest in helping out the community a little bit more. We've had students request volunteer experiences in the area. Someone had asked him come in the other day and ask if there was a volunteer board. So we're thinking about doing something like that. I think the new space, the way it was designed, is really engaging students and spending more time on campus. And that's what you that's what they're doing, so they don't just yeah. come and take a class and then leave. Right, which is always a challenge with a community college. A lot of our students are commuters. Most of them work. A lot of them are part-time, and often they have families, so they have a lot of other things going on in their life. But we're trying to balance those other responsibilities with activities and events that fit in with their lifestyle and their interests and needs. Do you see them forming social groups just in in various spaces? I mean, how, how do they... I do. Now that we have the space that the administrative staff sees frequently, we used to have a small student lounge up on the fifth floor, which was very out of the way to most people. There are certain pockets of folks that you see sitting, playing chess, or just sitting and talking between classes. We have a very nice courtyard outside of our building that has picnic tables and people go out there now and sit in between classes and eat lunch. And that, that's a real mm -hmm. asset over it there. It is. It's yeah. a nice space. Well, we have to take another break, and then we'll come back, and we'll talk some more about the marriage. Well, welcome back. This is Middlesex Moments Radio Show, and I'm Dr. Anna Wasesha, president of Middlesex, today talking with Tammy Christopher right here on WLIS WMRD. What we're doing is trying to get out to the listening public all kinds of information about the Meriden Center that we have had since when? Since how long has that been there? We've been teaching classes in Meriden since the 70s, but we've been Whoa. in our current location for just over five years just over six years now. Since the 70s? Yes. We started off teaching in the public high schools. Incredible. Yeah. Wow. That, well, I didn't know that. I'm still, I'm still <laughs> learning all about this place. For the break, what we were talking about is the college student experience, because I wanted to be sure people had a sense of what it would be like to be a student if they went to the Meriden Center. So why don't we talk some more about the things that go on on that campus? We have, um, in addition to the new space that we have as part of our renovation, we've been filling that space with a lot of programs, speakers that are attractive to all different types of students. We've had um, several different elected representatives visit classrooms, lobbyists, and people of government to discuss the inner workings of the Connecticut government and international government. We've also had folks come and present on the new Quinnipiac Hunger Museum. We've had the mayor of Hartford come and speak on cultural diversity to us. And we've had things that aren't aren't as academic. We've had Zumba lessons and West African dance come in. So it's a very diverse opportunity of activities and events that you can experience at the Meriden Center. Yeah, Zumba. Have you? Did you do it? I didn't. I was taking photos that day. <laughs> 
I, I waded into Zumba and then I quickly waded out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it's very energetic kind of it approach is, to exercise. Is. When you offer these kinds of programs and they come into class, I guess one of the questions I would have is like, how many students go to the Meriden Center? We have just over 600 students that take classes at the Meriden Center now. Some of them take classes exclusively at the Meriden Center and some of them go between campuses, between Meriden and Middletown. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have noticed is the students that are taking classes at Meriden are taking more classes there. Um, so our full time enrollment is going up a bit that way. And that's wonderful. And what size are your classes? We have classes that can be anywhere from 10 to 11 students if they're a specialty class all the way up to 32 students. What's nice about the Meriden Center is the classrooms are not that large so we don't have to worry about filling a lecture hall. This is a really nice opportunity for students to get there to know their instructors and all of our classes are taught by the faculty members. We don't have teaching assistants that teach any type of classes at the Meriden Center. What kinds of art classes are you offering? Uh, We have actually a new art room that came with our renovation. It's a studio art room. Right now we're offering offering drawing, two-dimensional design. We also have art classes that revolve around the graphic arts using the computers, which uh, our Macintosh lab will be a nice addition to that program. And we're hoping to bring in watercoloring and uh, some other programs in this fall. There's also a a possibility for a person who's a senior citizen, if they were interested in taking an art class, to come in and register. Absolutely, and they can do that at the Meriden Center. Our senior registration is towards the end of our registration period, so anyone can call to get more details on that. And speaking of senior citizens, there's also the Castle Craig Adult Learning Right, Castle Craig Adult Learners, it's a senior group that offers programming through the Meriden Center and other local community agencies, and um, they just recently had a trip that I helped them set up to go to Hartford. They visited the Wadsworth Anthenaeum and then the Butler McCook Homestead in Hartford as a part of a two-day trip, but they've had other opportunities where they've had speakers come into the Meriden Center and discuss um, DNA, discuss personal finance, we had the state archaeologist in, a lot of different types of activities and programs for the seniors. And if someone wanted to find out about that... They can call the Meriden Center okay. also and we can refer Good. them to the contact for that group. Good. And now one of the new things this last year was you began to offer Chinese language. Yes, we had, um, through a student survey, we had a few students that asked for it and we said, why not? Let's give it a try. It's a very difficult class to run. Uh, I noticed that other community colleges often schedule it but aren't always able to run it. It's a very difficult subject area. But we were able to offer it the past semester. It went very well. We're offering it again this summer, fall, and next spring. And because of that opportunity and students taking advantage of it, um, it was an attractive class uh, to the Board of Education in Wallingford. They're now running an international exchange program. Their first country is going to be China. So in some negotiations with them, we're working on getting an intern from Middlesex Community College to do a video diary with the high school students that will be coming from China, from Shanghai, and spending some time in Wallingford this summer. And then next summer, the Wallingford high school students will be going to Shanghai, and possibly that intern may be able to go overseas and continue the video diary there. We are also looking at developing a program for the Wallingford students to prepare them for their visit to China with some language and cultural um, information. Have you sat in on any of those Chinese language classes? I have. Yeah. They're very interesting. You have to just go in with an open mind. It's just everything is so different. They the students learn, you know, the forms, the language, um, the printing, as well as some culture and the the spoken language. So it's it's a very difficult course, but the students took it on with a lot of excitement and they're doing well. I've been at lots of colleges that have offered Chinese language, and people always say that. It's very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. But obviously, billions of people speak Chinese. Yes. So it can't be that it's beyond the human can to learn a language like that. It's just completely different from the English and from, you know, even Spanish. We have a lot of Spanish-speaking students that are taking this course. Oh, seriously? We do. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so again, they're learning the characters, they're learning the, the print as well. Yeah, uh, well, you know, China's actually very interested in Latin and South America. I mm-hmm. have a friend who was just in Cuba, and uh, the tour bus was a Chinese bus. Mm-hmm. And the Chinese universities are sending over large groups of students to learn Spanish. Obviously, most of them, I think, all learn English at some point in their elementary and secondary education yes. programs. Japan did that, too. We really have to step up our game about having students learn languages right. and strategic languages like Chinese and also Arabic, yes. um, which is, again, 
quote a difficult language, but mm -hmm. millions of people speak it. I think sometimes the um, folks aren't thinking of a community college as cutting edge in that area. So when we first started offering it, and it was in our catalog, students kind of laughed at the idea a little bit, but when you took the time to explain to them the importance of having any second language, then they began to take it a little bit more seriously and think about it and say, you know, this might be a good idea for me. This is something that's going to put me ahead and it's going to look great on my resume. Mm -hmm. Right. So. so is Wallingford High School also teaching Chinese language? They are not. Ah. They are not. So this is a good opportunity for us to pull some students from that area and give them the opportunity that our Meriden students have had. Sure. And the, the exchange will be with Shanghai? Yes. Okay. So this is what the, uh, Shanghai is, is like one of the well, mega cities, first of all, mm -hmm. around the world, uh, but also an incredibly modern city, yes. you know, because all their infrastructure is so much newer than ours. Um, so they have high-speed rail and phenomenal skyscrapers and, right. yeah. Yeah, it's just another opportunity for our students to be able to experience some diversity through this type of programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's so important to, well, I mean, we know that the world is incredibly small because of the web, the World Wide Web, right. um, but it's also physically, you know, perfectly possible to get from here to the other side of the world relatively inexpensively but you got to be prepared yes and language and culture is a, yeah a really important way to get prepared um, what else what else do you want to tell us about Meriden well right now we are enrolling for the fall semester and for our summer classes we have quite a few offerings I mentioned Chinese was one um, also English and math are always very popular subjects in the summer some students that have just graduated can get a head start in college by getting their math and their English underway this summer in an accelerated fashion. Um, and then a lot of students that we have coming from other colleges to kind of fill in the gaps. If they're going away to a four-year public or private university, they take summer classes here to help them along with their degrees attainment at other colleges. So do you have classes at night as well as during the day? We do. We have summer classes during the day and the evening. Mm -hmm. And we also have classes in the evening and uh, during the day in the fall semester, which starts August 29th. We're encouraging students to come in now if they're planning to use financial aid or they'd like their first pick of schedule. It's really important for them to get started early with that process. And you've got this welcome center. So if a student has never applied for financial aid and doesn't have a clue where to start. Right. The welcome center is really a great concept. We think of it as a very high level customer service um, opportunity. So you can come into the Welcome Center or call and we can give you all of the steps in the process, which can be confusing if you're not familiar with the terminology um, and the steps ahead of time. But we can give you all the steps, walk you through any kind of testing you may need, the application, financial aid application. You typically have one to two people that you're working with, so it's the same person over and over again you become familiar with and they know your situation. And it's a very comfortable area, so people feel very comfortable asking questions. Um, parents come in. We often have, you know, families come in with young children, and we have a little area for the kids to, oh. with books and small toys so everyone can get their work done when they're there. Mm -hmm. So why is it that you find your job so satisfying, Tim? It's very nice to be able to answer students' questions and help motivate them and move them along their secondary education track. There's a lot of different reasons that people come to college. Some people come after years. They never f started or finished a college career. Now they have children of their own, and they say, you know, I have to do it because I'm a hypocrite if I, don't, if I tell my child to go to college and I haven't done it yet. So we have some mother-daughter, father-daughter type teams. And then we have students who are coming right out of high school who are first-generation students who don't think that they can do it, but they just walk in the door anyway. And it's nice to help them find their way. Yeah, it's incredibly rewarding. Right. Yeah, And community colleges, I think one of the beautiful things about our system, our part of higher education, is that we are open to everyone at any point mm -hmm. in their academic program. You don't have to start in one place and then just lockstep finish a few years later. You can come in and, yeah. and drop out. And that's very in. evident in our classes because no one feels out of place. There's such a mixed opportunity of ages and situations, ethnicities and religions. It's a really nice place to take courses. Right, yeah, and students will remark on that. The, the classroom discussions are, are fabulously interesting because yes. people are so... Uh, they bring all their own talents and experiences with them and share them in the class. Well, I want to thank you for coming to be on the radio show today and remind everyone that we do have a Meriden Center and you can earn a complete degree in Associate of Science in uh, General Studies at Meriden. 
It's 55 West Main Street. Tammy Christopher is the director of that center, and I hope that you will check it out if you're at all interested in going to school in Meriden. And if you're interested in general in Middlesex Community College, you can find us on the web at mxcc.edu. And I'm Anna Wasesha, president of Middlesex Community College, wishing you all a very good day.